Hello everyone. So today we shall discuss about the location of zeros. Locations of zeros for the finite impulse responses linear phase systems. Right? In the last lecture we had discussed about the four types of FIR generalized linear phase system uh, functions. So, so far in this uh, topic we mostly stressed on the, or we connected the location of the poles with the causality and the, and the stability particularly. We have also discussed about the minimum phase system which is generally characterized by the location of zeros. But since we are studying the effect of the poles in zeros on the characteristics of the filters which are desired filters possibly. So we shall also see that what limitations are imposed by the location of zeros particularly for those four types of uh, FIR linear phase systems. So given the fun time domain function h of n we know that we can compute the z transform using this formula for n is equal to 0 to m since it's a finite impulse response function so we have hn z to the power minus n okay now these four responses we had seen in the last lecture where this is the type 1 and this is the type 1 and 2 which are symmetric functions and these c and d figure are the type 3 and type 4 which are anti-symmetric okay so discussing about these four types of um, FIR functions so first of all we shall consider the symmetric case where your h of n has a symmetry and particularly for types 1 and 2 Okay, for these types we know that we have hn is equal to hm minus n. So substituting this into this equation we will get your h of z is equal to n is equal to 0 to m and I replace this hn by hm minus n times z to the power minus n. I can also Reparameterize this function by changing the summation from let's say k is equal to m to 0 and putting hk and zk and z to the power minus n. So this is what I will get. Okay, which is nothing but um, it should be just a minute, it should be m because we have replaced n by m minus n so it would be minus m so if you see closely this function it is nothing but if I take this z to the power minus m outside of the summation since it does not depend it does not have a variable k so it would be z to the power minus m and this rest of the part this rest of the part is the Fourier transform oh sorry the z transform h with z inverse so your h of z would become would be equal to z to the power minus m times z inverse this is only for the symmetric case that is for type 1 and type 2 FIR responses now we can see various cases uh, that what would be the effect on this on the location of zeros on the on the response itself okay so if let's say we have z naught is a zero of the function h of z then what does it hold that your h of z naught would be equal to zero <coughs> but since we know h of z is equal to this so it would become z naught to the power minus m and h z naught inverse right so this now what does it say 
So this implies that if z0, if I denote let's say z0 by in polar coordinates uh, e raised to the power j theta, if this is a zero of this h of z, then it implies that the reciprocal of this zero, that is z0 inverse, which would be equal to r inverse e raised to the power minus j theta, is also a zero of hz right this you can see quickly that once that if z0 is a zero of this function hz then this would hold right now if i put h of z inverse and i want to determine whether it would be zero or not and using this relationship i can write it as uh, z0 to the power m and then it would become hz0 and since h z0 is equal to 0, this would equal to 0, meaning to say that the reciprocal of this z0 or z0 inverse would also be a 0 of h of z. Right? This is the first property that if z0 is a 0 of hz, then its reciprocal would also be a 0 of h of z. Now the second case, when your h of n is a real function is real and suppose z0 is a 0 of h of z the system your time domain function is a real function and z0 is a 0 of hz it implies that the complex conjugate of z0 which would be equal to uh, e raised to the power minus j theta is also a 0 of h of z if z0 uh, the complex conjugate of z0 is a 0 of hz then the inverse of this complex conjugate which is r inverse e raised to the power j theta is also a 0 of h of z right what it means that each complex 0 which is not on the unit circle since if it is on the unit circle we'll talk about this case when z0 is on the circle which means that r is equal to 1 we'll see that what would happen but for the moment that each complex 0 which is not on the unit circle Will, also, will be a part of a set of four conjugate reciprocal zeros of the form 1 minus r e raised to the power j theta z inverse 1 minus this is the actual one uh, its complex conjugate r e raised to the power minus j theta z inverse the third factor is the inverse of the complex conjugate which would be 1 minus r inverse e raised to the power j theta z inverse and finally the inverse of the z0 which is 1 minus r inverse so power minus j theta z inverse so it this is the complete set of four conjugate reciprocal zeros which has this form okay now talking about the zero lying on the unit circle if a zero is on the unit circle meaning to say your z0 would be equal to e raised to the power j theta your r is equal to 1 so its inverse which is e raised to the power minus j theta which would in fact equivalent to the complex conjugate of z0 as well in that case it would be uh, it would uh, form a part of a set of uh, these polynomials 1 minus e raised to the power j theta z inverse and 1 minus e raised to the power minus j theta z inverse okay this is for the case when the zero is on the unit circle here we took the complex conjugate uh, the complex conjugate of z0 but say suppose if your z0 is a real meaning to say if a 0 of h of z 
is real but not on the unit circle right and not on the unit circle so based on this information and from our previous discussion we know that the reciprocal would be a part of the zero of h of z and in that case your h of z will have factors of the form 1 plus minus r z inverse because you don't have the e raised to power j theta factor and it's, com it's uh, inverse 1 plus minus r inverse z inverse so again it would be of this form the next case so suppose finally we have a zero of h of z at z is equal to plus minus 1 so in that case if you think wisely that it's real it's on the unit circle so it will contain only of the factors 1 plus minus z inverse because the reciprocal of 1 itself is a 1 or of minus 1 it's 1 but particularly the case of z is equal to minus 1 is important why because if you have z is equal to 1 then no issues the reciprocal would also be a part of it and in fact the reciprocal is itself the, the same factor okay? but z is equal to minus 1 is important because if you recall the function h of z which was given by z raised to the power minus m and h z inverse right m is coming because it is a finite impulse response of finite length so if I substitute z is equal to minus 1 here I would get what uh, my excuse me, minus one raised to the power minus m and h of minus one. Okay, so notice this part. This is minus one raised to the power minus m. So what does it say? So if your m is even, in that case you will have a simple identity because in that case you would have h minus 1 is equal to h minus 1 so your minus 1 raised to the power minus m m being an even number then it would be 1 now your if m is odd so in that case you would have h of minus 1 is equal to minus 1 uh, minus 1 of h of minus 1 Right. So what does it imply? That your h this equality would hold if you have h minus 1 is a 0. So it must be a 0. That if your m is odd and you have a uh, if your if m is odd then your z then it should have a 0 at minus 1. So what it says that for symmetric impulse response with m odd the system function must have a zero at z is equal to minus one hmm? we can see uh, quickly on the pole zero plot on this function so this is the this uh, a and b corresponds to the type one and type two that is for the symmetric cases so what we had discussed that if your z naught is equal to r e raised to the power j theta let's say this one is a zero of h of z then its reciprocal would also be a zero and its complex conjugate would also be a zero and the inverse of the complex conjugate would also be a zero so this is a typical pole zero plot of the type one right similarly this one is also depict the same scenario here we have a zero located at minus one what does it mean that in this function m would have been 
an odd number that's why we are having h of minus 1 is equal to 0 but not here in these two in these cases okay it is only when you have a z is equal to minus 1 and m being odd if a 0 is on the unit circle which is this case in both the type 1 and type 2 then it only says that this inverse and its complex conjugate would also be a 0 of it right so these two pole 0 plot are a typical plot for the type 1 and type 2 considering all these uh, scenarios now talking about the anti-symmetric case which is the type 3 and for the anti-symmetric case which are basically type uh, 3 and type 4 FIR linear phase systems okay. by using the same approach where we put the this equality right in that case we would have the anti-symmetric and by putting that equality we will get that h of z is equal to minus z raised to the power minus m and h of minus z inverse oh, sorry it would be only z inverse so you notice that this negative sign appears so if we carry out the same analysis what we had done for the symmetric cases <coughs> So if your z is equal to 1 then in that case you will have h1 is equal to minus of h1 right so h of z must have a 0 at z is equal to 1 for both m even and m odd right note that it is irrespective so for anti-symmetric case <coughs> if you happen to have such kind of function which belongs to this categories type 3 and type 4 you would definitely have a 0 at z is equal to 1 because it holds for both when you have m is equal to even or m is equal to odd but now if we say if z is equal to minus 1 so in that case you can write h is minus 1 is equal to minus 1 raised to the power minus m plus 1 this plus 1 is coming from the negative sign an extra negative sign and h of minus 1 right so now it depends on what is this number m minus 1 so if your m minus 1 is odd that is if your m minus 1 is odd in that case you would have what is equivalent to saying that if m is even then you would have h minus 1 is equal to minus of h minus 1 meaning to say that z is equal to 1 must be a 0 so for this anti-symmetric cases when you have m an even number in that case you would definitely have a 0 located at z is equal to uh, sorry minus 1 so these are the sum of the constraints on the location of the zeros because these zeros what what whatever is are the must conditions depending on the values of uh, the m it is a mandatory requirement to design an fir linear phase system okay so since we are discussing uh, okay we can see very quickly for the pole zero plot these are the pole uh, type this this c and d belongs to type 3 and type 4 right so here you see uh, must 0 and similarly um, here minus 1 and plus 1 okay because it is appears from the nature of the m where it's an even or an odd number 
Right? So these are the typical plots. So since we are talking about the <coughs> about the poles and zeros, uh, sorry, the zeros particularly, and we had we had given enough emphasis on the minimum of phase system, so we can quickly see the relation of FIR linear phase system to the minimum phase systems. One type of decomposition we had studied already. So if we summarize that the FIR linear phase system will real impulse response have either have zeros either on the unit circle zeros on the unit circle or at conjugate reciprocal locations okay this is what we had studied that with real impulse responses either put in the unit circle or at the conjugate reciprocal locations so thus the system function of any FIR linear phase system you can factor um, FIR LPS can be factored into the first minimum phase term let's define it by h min of z another term let's define at the maximum phase term h max by z and finally h uc of z and this uc is the unit circle it contains containing zeros containing only zeros on the unit circle okay this is what we can factorize so by factorization meaning to say that i can write h of z as the multiplication of all these terms h min of z h min x of z and h u c of z where your h min x of z would be equal to h min of z inverse and z raised to the power minus mi and your mi is the number of zeros of h min z okay so this is important the relationship between the linear phase system fir linear phase system and the minimum phase system so what does it say if we are introducing this mi number of zeros of h min z so h min of z this part h min of z has all mi of its zeros inside the unit circle h u c let's say it contains mi number of zeros inside the unit circle h u c let's say it contains mo number of zeros on the unit circle but since we have this relationship between the h max and h min so i would have mi number of zeros outside the unit circle so if i compute the overall order of the system it would be order overall order m it would be 2 mi plus m naught of the function okay so this is a very brief discussion on the relationship between the fir lps system to the minimum phase system in its decomposition okay so i think we can stop here thank you